Welcome to Spirit World Broadcast with Reverend Austin Nabuko. Verse number 26 to 27. But when the comforter is come, Jesus is teaching his voice, I will, I, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth. So he wants to let you know who is the comforter, the Holy Ghost. Which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Take note of that. Are you taking note of something? He shall testify of me. Verse 27. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. The word in verse 27, bear witness, or that phrase, bear witness. And the word testify in verse 26 was translated from the same Greek word, maturio, or written from the same Greek word. So by interpretation, he said, the Holy Ghost is going to give you my testimony and you will carry my testimony to other people. Are you here with me? Earlier in his teaching in John 5, 37 to 39, he used the same Greek word, maturio. Same Greek word. Let's look at it, verse 37. The father himself, which has sent me, had borne witness. That born witness is material. It's like say testify. Of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time. Nor seen his shape. He was talking to the Pharisees who were in doubt of him. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he had sent. Him ye believe not. And I said to them. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they, the scriptures, are they, the scriptures, which testify, material again, of me. So, he said, the father had borne witness of me. And the scripture bears witness of me. So, whatever is the father's witness is written in the scripture. Then he now said to them, when the Holy Ghost comes... He will testify of me and you will become ones that, the ones that carry my testimony. Same word, material. You will bear my witness, material. Testify, material. The Father born witness of me, material. The scripture testify of me, material. Same word. There is something he wants to build up there. The word material in Greek means to be a witness. That is to affirm that one has heard or have seen or have experienced something or that he has been taught that he has come to know by teaching of divine revelation and inspiration. So Jesus said, my father's inspiration, the prophet wrote it down. But the Holy Ghost is coming. When it comes, it will give you same testimony. It means the scripture will serve as a background for confirming who is speaking by the Holy Ghost. It means the scripture will, will serve as you know, a, 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 a body for accepting a truth. So it means when someone comes and says, the Holy Ghost says, and the scripture is not saying that same thing, the person is either a liar or an ignorant man. So it means many teachings in the church are lies. Anytime you see people try to make themselves a hero, a hero, then something is wrong. Because the Holy Ghost didn't come to make men heroes. That's why Matthew 7, when the man, when the man said to Jesus, haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we done miracles in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? He said, no, I don't know you. It means they used his name to make a name for themselves, another Jesus. Fear anyone that disregards scripture. The Holy Ghost doesn't move without scripture. The Holy Ghost is not interested in giving people experiences and knowledge on earth that contradicts the scripture. 
the scripture is meant to reveal Christ. So the Holy Ghost came to guide us into that truth. In John 16, Jesus said to them in verse 7, he said, it is expedient for you that I go. If I do not go, the comforter, the spirit of truth will not come. But when I go, he will come and he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Of sin because they don't believe in me. Of righteousness because I've gone to the Father. Of judgment because Satan has been judged. He said in verse 12, I have so many things to say to you. I have so many things to set in their proper place for you. But you can't receive it now. But when, verse 13, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. He will lead you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. He will only say what he has heard. And he will make me known to you. He will declare my things to you. He will reveal me to you. He says, that is how you glorify me. Because he will take my things and give to you. All my things are the things of the Father. Now look at what he said. He will guide you into all truth. Who is the truth? Christ. What is the theme of the scripture? Christ. From Genesis to Revelation, Christ is the theme. Nothing you look for is a theme. Christ is a theme. He will guide you into all truth. The reason he's doing this is the reason he said that he won't say anything of himself. So that when people say things and say, Holy Ghost said, Holy Ghost lead me, you check it. If it's a testimony of Christ, it will be the testimony of the scriptures. Paul called the things written in the scripture the testimony of God. The gospel of God. Romans 1 verse 1. He said, I'm separated to the gospel of God. Verse 2, which is in King James language, is in parenthesis. There's a bracket open before I start talking. Then the bracket closed. He said, the, 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 the gospel of God is that promise that the prophet wrote in the scriptures. Bracket closed. He said, consigning who? Jesus, who came as the seed of David in the flesh. Verse 4, he said, who was declared the son of God by the spirit of holiness at the resurrection. So it means, remove verse 2 because it's in parenthesis. If you want to read, observing, you know, grammatical punctuations, remove things in bracket. So it means the gospel of God, verse 3, is concerning Jesus. And verse 2, back there, it says it's the scripture. Is the word scripture. That's why every learning must crystallize in Christology. It must crystallize in learning Christ and the things that pertains to Christ, to his person and to his works. Any teaching anywhere called God's teaching, a theology that is not based on Christ, is not is falsehood. Because there is no God until you know Christ. You don't know Jesus, you don't know God. You are like a Muslim. You are like an atheist. You are, an atheist, I don't believe in God. You are like anybody who calls God, a Hindu calls God. The, the, the difference is that our God is known in Christ. Christ is God. Jesus is God. He's not a junior God. Rather, he's God made manifest in the flesh. By reason of being made manifest in the flesh, God, one God, has now become a father. Father of the only begotten son. But that is not his will. His will is that there will be many sons. So the only begotten son that came through the womb of a woman have to die and come through the womb of the earth. By resurrection, now we can be called sons of God in the image of God, in the image of Christ. We are just as Jesus is. When you see me, I see you, I see Christ. And how do I know when you speak? Because your container is deceptive. 
deceptive. The human body is deceptive. But when we open our mouth and start talking, we can see Christ revealed. And when Christ, I now know that you're a son of God. But immediately you told me that you're born again, I see Christ. From your confession, I see Christ. Before you even start talking. So we are, we are the sons of God that are still living on earth. And we are the sons of God that live in Christ and live on earth. The day we leave our body, we have no earthly presence any longer. Are you here with me? We have only Christ's presence in the heavenlies. What do I want to do with you because of that? I, because people teach, people talk. How can you sit under somebody who is prophesying from morning to night and is not Jesus? All prophecy is Jesus. All prophecy is Jesus. If, I, if by the spirit of Christ I tell you anything right now about yourself, by the power of, of the spirit, the gift of the spirit, I tell anything. And I don't teach you Christ. I just distracted you. I just distracted you. What you should know is who you are in Christ. And they don't use prophecy to do that. You don't use prophecy to tell people who they are in Christ. You use teaching. I can point you now and call you out by the gift of spirit. Tell you things about your life. It makes no meaning. Good or bad, it makes no meaning. Do you know Acts 21? When Paul on his traveling entered the house of Philip. And the prophet Agabus came. You know it. When Agabus came, didn't he give ex, you know, correct prophecy? As a matter of fact, before Agabus, there was a particular place where they entered. The people in that place told him what Agabus told him. That when you get to Jerusalem, they will arrest you. When Paul had that prophecy, as much as that prophecy was of the spirit, look at verse 7 of Acts 21. Let me show you something. Verse 7. Acts 21, verse 7. And when they were... When they had finished, and when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to what's in T.O. Ptolemaeus and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. Next verse. And the next day, we that were at Paul's company departed. And came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. Next verse. And the same, and the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. They were not prophets; they did prophesy. That is your portion as a believer. You don't need to be a prophet; you need to you just prophesy. And let me do that quickly. I can come to Joshua right now and stand before him and start prophesying. I don't need to say, ling, 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 ling. Holy Ghost, Scorpio, taught me. I start prophesying because the gift is in me. I will just hold his hand and say, Joshua, by the Spirit of God, I speak to you that you should not be afraid. Do not walk in fear. Don't even think about your future. Your future is settled. All you do, give me thanks, said the Spirit of the Lord. Give thanks and give thanks. And from now, I will reveal to you, said the Spirit of God, every step you should take. The ones I don't reveal, do not take them. I've spoken to him by prophecy right now. Not Joko. I've spoken to you by prophecy. I can go to Uche and prophesy. Leave him and prophesy. There is no, there is no begging the Holy Ghost, the gift inside of you. No begging. That's why in the teaching of prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14, he said that you should prophesy. Isn't that what he said? He said, pursue love. Desire the gift. The gift of the spirit. Rather, malone in Greek. Rather, I mean the best of it. That you may what? Prophesy. I just put my hand on his shoulder. I said, yesterday is gone. Today has come. But your tomorrow is far better than today. Now be encouraged. Be strengthened by those things I did yesterday that gives you joy. Then take note of the things happening now that are making you sad. Because tomorrow that is coming will be a compilation of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And it shall give you good joy. But don't look at the things that are happening now. I just prophesy to him. That's what I just It's not something, hey, so that people don't embarrass you. He's saying in that house, there were four girls that prophesy. They are not prophets, so they prophesy. That's a portion of every believer. That's why sometimes you come to a Holy Ghost meeting. We say, go prophesy to one another. Prophesy. We are moving you to use your gift. Use your gift. 
Your daughter didn't do well in school. She just came back discouraged, so discouraged. She has failed uh, 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 four courses in her year one. And now she's going to repeat them. There's every tendency that she's going to repeat her final year again. You call her, hold her hands and say, listen to me. There is nothing like failure. And now I declare to you that out of this failure is coming your success. Out of this failure is coming your strength. Out of this failure is coming your concentration, your focus into the future. You live her. You have just turned things around. A young man in a church many years ago failed out of maybe 18 courses in year one, he has failed about 14. So he's gone. They told him, go. So he came to me and told me with a brown envelope. I said, I don't believe that. Go back to school. End you here. Go back. I spoke over him. He went back to school. He graduated. He only, he only repeated one semester. He, he has never been heard before. So he had Four prophets, four daughters who prophesy. But look at what he, what happened to Paul in that house. Give me verse 10. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Take note, they prophesy, but they are not prophets. When they say prophet, it's an office like a pastor's office, a teacher's office, evangelist's office. All of us may not be in such offices, but we are also not to neglect evangelizing. We are not neglecting prophesying. We do not neglect teaching. So we grow to teach. You might not be a teacher, but you grow to teach what teachers are teaching. So now a prophet is around. Look at what the prophet did. Next verse. Let me take my technology. <laughs> this technology. He said, and when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus said the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Next verse. And when he had this, when he had these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Did you see that? But look at what happened next. Then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying the will of the Lord be done. He went. If you read chapter 23, Jesus by himself told him when he went, he said, now you have gone to Jerusalem, go to Rome. So it was the will of God for him to go. But the Holy Ghost only revealed the obstacles. That's why for us who are called pastors, Holy Ghost didn't reveal to us all the obstacles on the way. Because we didn't go to ask prophets to tell us whether we should go to Yenegua or not. We only saw where we are going to. Even when we had dreams of obstacles, we still went. The man resisted that prophecy by the Holy Ghost. That's what you should do when you know the will of God. You go to a church, a man calls you up because I'm not there and begin to lie about your life. And I say, lie. That's a lie. Agabus was lying by the Holy Ghost. Did you hear what I said? The Holy Ghost is telling what will happen, but Jesus has told him what has happened and he has overcome it. Not everything revealed is discussed. Did you hear what I said? That's what you should do. The ministry of the Holy Ghost is not against the scripture. The ministry of the Holy Ghost depends on the scripture. That's why where we have read in John 15, you could see that when he comes, he will testify. What will he testify? Me, Christ. Then you will bear witness. You will now bear witness. You can now see the next thing he said. He said that you have been searching the scriptures. There are they that testify of me. The same Greek word, material. Earlier, he said to them, the reason you don't know me is because uh, the word of the Lord does not abide in you. My father who sent me have borne witness of me, have matured me. Then look at 1 John chapter 5, verse number 6, to see the ministry of the Holy Ghost. This is he that came 
by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. The word beareth witness is the same Greek word maturio, M-A-R-T-U-R-E-O. The spirit that bear witness of Christ is called the truth, the spirit of truth. He guides you into all truth. Ignorance of the scripture is a sign that you are not called. You shouldn't go yet. You are called, you learn. I don't care who that man is. They say, ah, this Baba, in they do miracles. So, hey, do they? They do. They ain't even know, know Bible. Who, op- who asked him to open his mouth? You are not permitted to represent Christ in this community until you know him as he's in the scripture. Follow me. Because the leading and move of the spirit does not abandon scripture. Look at Jesus resurrected and they don't know him. Remember, when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will testify of me. If you saw the scriptures, you see me. Okay? They testify of me. He res- they didn't know anything about Jesus. Because they have been with him this number of years. All they could enjoy. And they say, he's a prophet. Ah, mighty man of God. He's a prophet. They didn't know him. So Jesus met them and looked at them, called them fools. Slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to suffer these things and enter into it? So the prophets thought about Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and his glory. That's what they thought. When church is removed from there, there is no church. When faith is removed from there, there is no faith. Immediately there is no resurrection. Faith is vain. Belief is vain. Message is vain. So Jesus now corrected them. Luke 24, look at what he said to them in 27, verse 24. 20, chapter 24, verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. It means Jesus looked at them. They have read the scripture. They don't know the scripture. So Jesus opened their mind and took the knowledge of himself from the scripture and put into them. It's like someone is interpreting a language for you. Maybe I go to Ghana, I'm preaching right now, and they're interpreting in Ghanaian language. I don't know what they're saying. They don't know. I don't know what they're interpreting. And I don't, the people don't know what I'm saying. So somebody is standing between them and me. Open their mind to take my understanding and put into their mind just by interpretation. That's what Jesus did here. He interpreted to them. He made them to know that the scripture is about Jesus. The things concerning me. Then look at what happened to them in verse 32. Let's read 31 first. 32, 31, 32. Can you hear me verse 31? And they, and they entered in. Read for me verse 31. Then their eyes were opened. And they knew him. And he vanished from their sight. Are you seeing something? Without the scripture, he vanished. But by the scripture, he will appear again. But now when he appears, in their heart, not appear physically. That's why God doesn't want you to know him by experience. He doesn't want you to know him by experience. He is the invisible God that dwells in unapproachable light that no man has ever seen or will ever see, but yet is revealed in your heart. He wants to see him in your heart. Now look at verse 32. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Look at, he didn't talk without opening the scriptures. And the pastor they said, they said to him, he said, don't mind Pastor Austin, all these lecturers who don't have power, who don't have power, teaching, 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 teaching. They are teaching, 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 teaching. They don't have power. Power! Power! Having power is not saying, shouting power. Any power that cannot change you is not power. Real power transforms you. Real power is that you can even live here as a drunkard and be drinking, but my message is ringing in your heart. Tim, 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 Tim. See, that man of God said, he said, take, he said he was talking and opening the scripture. The word open is diano go in Greek. It means he splitted 
the scripture open for their heart to be split open. No splitting of scripture, no splitting of the heart. That's why a Muslim can walk in here. I heal the Muslim of a major disease, major sickness. He will go home, remain a Muslim, but yet was healed in the name of Jesus. That's why an atheist can walk in here, doesn't believe God. I put my hand on his head and heal him of a major toothache that doctors cannot heal him. He goes home healed but doesn't know my Jesus, still an atheist. So Jesus didn't come to heal. The Holy Ghost didn't come to heal. There was healing going on before he came. He didn't come to give money. Money was being made before he came. Let me tell you, before Jesus came, false prophets and prophets were healing the sick. He's, he's, Jesus healed before he died. The purpose for which he came is to die and resurrect to give you salvation. He was healing before he did that. He didn't come to heal the sick. He didn't come to make you healthy. He didn't come to give you a husband. He didn't come to give you a wife. So the Holy Ghost doesn't lead you in that direction. Are you here? He split their heart and put in the knowledge of him inside of him. And they now saw him in their heart. He vanished away. That's why till now you don't need to see Jesus physically. He's revealed in your heart. Jesus is the image of God. When he's revealed, God is revealed. Are you here? The Bible says you are saved, called with a holy calling, not according to your works, but according to the grace and purpose of him, which he fixed in you in Christ before the world began, now made manifest by his appearing, who abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light via the gospel. Look at this. He brought immortal life. That life of God that men cannot see. To light. He brought it to manifestation. To, 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 to light by the gospel. So remove the gospel. There is no light. There is no manifestation of eternal life. I'm just bringing to something very important. Now look at this. Look at this. First Corinthians. Chapter number 2. Verse 9. He said, it is written, eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard, he has not entered the heart of any man to know the things which God prepared for those whom he loved. Are you here? Next verse, he said, these things he has revealed to us by his spirit who searches the deep things of God or the secrets of God. Okay? He said, like no man knows what is in a man except the spirit of that man. No man knows what is in God except the spirit of God. Verse 12. He said, but listen. He said, you have not received the spirit of this world. I add my own so that you, that you may be stranded. The spirit of this world keep, leaves you stranded. But the spirit from God that you may know. I do. You may be aware. You may perceive that things freely given to you by who? God. Take note. No man knows what is in God except the spirit of God. Then the spirit of God came that you may know what is in God for you. Freely given to you. But verse number 13 is the place. Look at this. He said, these things revealed by the Holy Ghost, we speak them not with the wisdom taught by men, but with that taught by the Holy Ghost. Comparing spiritual things revealed by God with spiritual written by God. Comparing spiritual things revealed by his spirit with spiritual written by the spirit. Take note. He said in that verse, he said, we speak not with the wisdom of men, but with the wisdom taught by the Holy Ghost. He said, how we do is that the Holy Ghost who came to testify of him will say something that about us in him. Then we look for the spiritual where it is written and compare it. That word comparing must be understood from the Greek word where it is translated, not from the English word. Comparing is a, a word for judgment. Sunkrino in Greek. S-U-G-K-R-I-N-O. Pronounced soon krino. Soon krino. It means that you will combine what the Holy Ghost reveals with what he has written. If they match, say it. If he matches, say it. So that's why when Jesus came, he knows all things, but yet he went to the scripture. He's saying the volume of the books is written of me. 
So I come to do your will, O God. The move of the spirit. It's all about ministry. Holy Ghost will not lead you outside of ministry. I'm telling the truth. You know why people are frustrated? Let me tell you. You see, as Kenneth is here, they can get it easier now. Now, if you start asking God to show him things by the Holy Ghost, he will not hear. And he will not see. You will bear me witness that that's the frustration of the children of God. They have been asking God for long. Show me, show me, show me, show me. They have not seen. They don't know why they have not seen. It's because everything is shown in ministry. Every leading is in ministry. If you hear people like me said, God showed me my wife and say, get ready and marry. And you, you just think you can wake up in your bedroom and say, God, show me who is my wife. Was I asking to show me my wife? As a matter of fact, I didn't even know I meet my wife in Lagos. I only just said, if I go back to Rema Family Church and I see Sister Ikwo and I see Pastor Odu and I see Brother eh, Timothy, these three people, I'll stay back in that church because me and God, we are fighting. He's releasing me to go and serve, to go and do ministry. So, but I want to go and serve under Bishop Mike Okunkwo. I want him to train me. He's a man of God I love so much. Listen. I listened to him more than any other man of God at that time growing up in the faith. So what the Lord said to me, say, you must go back to Rema Family Church. I served in that church as an undergraduate two years before then. And I didn't like it because I was just walking, walking, walking. I became leader of this, leader of that, leader of that, leader of that, leader of that, leader. I liked it because I like to work, but going back, I don't want to just work. I want to be trained by a man of God. He said, you must go back there. So I went back to Leg Lagos. First Sunday in May, I walked to that place, 1998. And when I walked into that church, the church was no longer there. They have left FHS Staff Club. They are not in an, another place. Nobody knows where they are. The Spirit of God said to me, go and look for Sister so, so, so. She knows the place because she's a member of the church. And I can remember the house in Festac. So I went to the house. The sister is no longer a member of the church. Doesn't go to church. But see me, she was screaming. They know me, oh, Pastor Austin, Pastor Austin. Oh, you're back to Lagos. I said, I'm going to church. Let's go quickly. She deceived me. <laughs> Serve me breakfast. I refused to say, you must take breakfast. Then carry me. Oh, go to the place. Say, that's the church. The point. I went there. As I got there, in front of me is Pastor Odu. By the left is Brother Timothy. By the right is my wife. And I had it clearly say, that's your wife. Get ready and marry. And the quarrel I had with God is that, God, you didn't bring me to come and marry. No. I told her I'm marrying 30, 30, this 27. Why? He said to me, this is the first ministry you do before you do your ministry. So don't say, oh, Papa, God showed him his wife. He went and married. That's why he was a good wife. Uh, then you stay in your room. You are not going to church. Even church, that means you have never done before. You, you, are, you don't know road to evangelism. You, have, you don't even know whether you are called or not called. And then say, God, show me your wife. You see somebody. You not see people like, my, people like my wife. You see somebody and think, is, have you seen people who enter ministry this way? They say, I was fasting, praying. I wanted a good ministry. And God showed me I was on a platform on top of the world, preaching to the whole world. It's hallucination. It's not God that show you. God will show you how to be a good usher. How to be part of the team, the think tank of the team of the church, the think tank of the church, how to be part of it, how you as a very young person, you are already functioning as a deacon, that will show you, and you will be fun, how you will be, in, how you should be in church, when people have gone, you are there, Pastor, like, what are you doing here, join us in that meeting, that's what it will show you, I was in a dream, I saw myself, I said, I, people are carrying my briefcase, I'm like, you are a greedy thief, look at you, something is wrong, wrong with you, Ministry is the reason he said, he said, when you come, you testify me. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. When they are busy thinking of all kinds of stupid things for themselves, say, is it time for you to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus knew that these 40 days would be a waste if I don't quickly hand them over to the Holy Ghost for ministry. He said, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come, and you'll be my witnesses, my martyrs. People that will carry my testimony to people, other people as those who have heard of it, as those who have received it, then people who will use their life to serve me. 
So when he used the word matos in Greek there, in my witness, he's saying, it's either you be my ethical witness or my historical witness or my legal witness. You know what we are? We are the legal witness. We are not there. So we cannot be able to bear the history. What we can do is that we can look into the book and see the history and tell other people. But we are legal and then we can be ethical. Ethical is the reason why people died as martyrs. But today, I don't want to die like Peter died. I say it every day in church because I saw 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That the, the way I will give account at the throne of God is to use my body now for him. So what ministry is your body doing? He said on the judgment seat of Christ, we shall give account of what we did in our body and receive a reward. He said for that reason, I do not care how you see me. If you see me like a madman, it is the love of Christ that constrains me to do the will of God like a madman. That's why I, ask, I used to ask people, I say, where is your money in the gospel? Where is your time in the gospel? Where is your intellect in the gospel? What have you sacrificed in the gospel? What is it that someone can look at you and make a mockery of you because of the gospel of Jesus Christ? But Paul said, for that reason, we have this testimony or we have this opinion about ourselves. That whatever we are doing is for Christ. If you don't like it, it doesn't concern you. It's about God. When we are seen, it's for your sake. Because we see that he died for all, then all died. If all died, all should no longer live for themselves, but for him. That's my own ethical. That's how I'm his witness. So I cannot say, oh, how many hours to that place before we get there and preach? I'll go there. The reason you see me like evangelism, though I'm not an evangelist, is because that was the only thing I could do for Jesus. So whether my church has evangelism or not, no church, I don't wait for them, I create it. In my time, I was just known as an usher. But my pastor will walk to church on a Saturday. See church members under me, we are praying for evangelism. He said, Austin, how did you gather these guys? These guys don't even come to church. I said, I told them, that if they don't go for evangelism, then they are the sheep that don't give birth. They used to kill that sheep. A brand that doesn't bear fruit, they used to cut it off. Ah, is it shepherd that give birth? Have you seen where a shepherd sleeps with sheep to give birth? Is it not sheep that produce sheep? That's what I told them. They follow me. Evangelism. That's where I met my wife. In evangelism, I'm the evangelism leader. You know, some of you don't even know what will make a woman marry you. You don't know that there are some ladies in this church, the only thing you can prove to them that made them marry you is that you're committed to God. So, marriage is by common sense. Don't wait for Holy Ghost to lead you there. He leads you in ministry. He said you shall become my, my witnesses, not your witness. When we didn't know anything, we misinterpret first, uh, Acts 1 verse 8. Because they interpreted this way, they said, you shall become proof producers. That's what they taught us. Proof pro we are not proof producers anything. We just go and tell them about Jesus who loves us and died for us. Who lives in us. That's all we go and tell them. When they believe, he heals them. When they believe, he saves them. When they believe, he transforms As simple as the message is, that's how the potency is. Those that we didn't know, proof producers, they say, show them. Holy God didn't come for you to be a show shower. He came for you to be a witness for ministry. Romans 8, verse 11. Romans 8, verse 11. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Isn't that what he said? As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I want you to take note of that word led. A goal in Greek. That word led by the spirit is where people have missed it. Where they missed it is because they think the leading will be based on their selfishness. No, it's based on his mission. He came to testify of Christ. So as many are led in that mission, they are the sons of God. Many have rejected that leading. So, 
They cannot understand why they can't hear, they can't see, they can't, they can't, they can't follow the spirit. They can fast from that. You see this thing they call fast. It's the worst thing that ever happened to believers. Because it's their bribery and corruption. And the person you cannot bribe is God. Thinking that if you fast five days, fast five days, then God will talk to you. It's foolishness. Many are led by the spirit. They are the sons of God. Let me show you somewhere. Let's go to 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy oh, chapter 4. We'll read from verse 9, 10, 11, 12. But for a purpose, look at it now. Led. They are sons of God. Paul is speaking to Timothy. He said, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. That's the leading. When I say to you, come quickly, that's the leading. I'll show you. I'll show you the leading of God in the church. Now, look at the next verse. I say, For Demas had forsaken me, have loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Next verse. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark as if Mark is a wood. Take Mark as if Mark is this chair. Follow me now. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. What connects me with Pastor Abiodun is ministry. That's all. With all my dickens, even with my wife. It was ministry that made us to marry. Remove ministry, we can never be happy in that house. Any day there is a struggle in ministry, my wife and I knows that we will also struggle in our relationship. Everybody, down to my children, the day they don't come out for a, you know, early morning devotion that we have been doing before they were born. Not one day have been missed, even if I am drunk in the Holy Ghost. I have to explain it. Before, I say, before someone say, Papa I used to get drunk. <laughs> even if I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost, you know, what they hear in the church, before they give it legs, eh? That man, eh? not, not drunk at. <laughs> we shall all meet there. My daughter knows that the day she, she comes there, her, my face changed. Till now that she has answered the call, she has graduated. She's working with me. Till this moment, when we sit down having fellowship, my voice will come. I hope you are listening to me. Lift up your face. You read English in university. In communication, it's eyeball to eyeball. She knows. They know very well that, that when I say, are you listening to me? That means I'm addressing everybody down to my wife. We are four in that fellowship. I make it clear that without my leading, the Holy Ghost have left the church. You need to know that. Do you know why people make have problem? They just wake up and say, I can't do anything. It's a lie. God, not a disorderly God. He said, all things should be done Decently and what? In order. That's the problem. You just think that because you are the one that owns your house, owns your leg, owns a chair, you can come to church anytime. Immediately you don't come our time, you're a rebel. Let me just, even if you are not a member of this church, even if you don't go that time, you're a rebel. You are a conscious, deliberate, demonically used rebel. You don't know that. Well, go read James now. Read James chapter 3 from verse 15, 16, 17, 18. Go read James. He said, that wisdom is devilish. That wisdom is earthly. That wisdom is sensual. It's not from God. Wherever they tolerate that wisdom, he said, all evil, all kinds of wickedness is there. That's why we don't tolerate it. No matter of friendliness will make me, I don't address you. They must have left me. He loved this word. Bring me Mark. Look at it. Take Mark like a wood. And bring him. The word bring him is the same word. Lead. I go. Come, Pastor Abiodun, I use you for the first service to do illustration. What is illustration? He said, bring Mark, I go. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So when you are not led by the Spirit of God, tell me whose son you are. Same Greek word, I go. Bring him. For what? He is profitable for ministry. Though, I, Pastor Abiodun, follow me. Say, bring him. Now he's following me, I've taken him. Like a wood, 
like Gary Turner, like a wood, like a shoe. By his obedience, he has lost himself. He's now serving the will of God, serving the purpose of God. That's what many people don't want to come into, but they want to ask God to show them where the money is. Odeg, we'll show you. Odeg, wait now, we'll show you. But watch. When I move, separate from me. Separate from me. Who am I leading now? I want to bring him to ministry. The ministry is profitable unto me, not unto God. It's a ministry he gave me for him. So the ministry will profit me in the ministry. So I'm bringing him to come and bring the profit. But he has said to go like Demas go. Demas have followed the world. That's what many of you do. I've not pastored you so you don't know the leading of God. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Let's look at something quickly before we close. Acts 20 28. This technology, let me leave you. See if I can read this thing. No, it's too much. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God. Is it to entertain the church of God? Is it to solve the problem of the church of God? No. No. To feed. To feed. He made me overseer. So in your rebellion, me I'll separate. If I agree with you in your rebellion, then I have disobeyed the one who made me your overseer. So leave them as alone. If you love the word, let him go for it. But bring me Mark. Mark is a repentant servant. The first time I rejected Mark is because of ministry. Paul said, we are not going with Mark. Mark is always following his family. That's what Paul said. Because of that, Paul and Barnabas separated because Mark is Barnabas' cousin. When you place sentiments and tribalism in ministry, you will, be, you will lose. But later, Mark has changed. He said, bring me Marcos. When you see them address the word Marcos, it's Mark. Bring me Mark. He's useful for ministry. Look at how they went and took a full-fledged man. A man who, was, who is even senior to Timothy in ministry. But because he left, now Timothy is leading him. He said, take, 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 take. Take this waste basket. Take this offering basket. Take it and put it here. That's how they carried Mark. Take Mark. In ministry, until they can take you, you can be led. Is it take? <laughs> when I got married was when I knew that it's not easy to serve God. And we just had a baby. And we are, our church is far away, Festac. We are living in Okuku. Festac is a more of in local government. We are living in Afrom Media. That is the last part of Ojo local government. So now we, we have a baby. We don't have our own car. We enter buses to go. We enter first bus that will stop us at, at Okuku. They will not take an hour and that will take us to that junction in first time. We will not take a transport inside three. Then mama will be breastfeeding her here. When I see time has gone, I say, stand up, stand up. Let's start going this, this, this. He said, wait now. So our whole rubber, we must find a way to make it easier. Then as we are going, I carry her here. She first of all entered the bus. You know the rush bus in Lagos. Enter the bus. Then from window, I carry hand and I hand over to somebody. To who, I don't know who is holding hand. Then me, I come, come and enter. Then go and look for my daughter and carry. If you don't like that kind of taking, they will not use in ministry. I want to go early. I don't want in the name of I'm married. I have a child. I come late. I will go there sometimes. We are the one opening the church door for first stack members who are living around. One even I say, you pastor sin. Ah, you know, go wait for your house. I want to go early. If they can't take you, Holy Ghost can't lead you. When you start getting angry with the Timothy that came to take you, he won't lead you. You will soon separate your hand and follow the word. You will soon be angry with the protocol and systems through which we bring ourselves together to learn and to grow. 
You soon get angry. Must I belong to a team that goes for evangelism every week? Must I? Don't they know that I'm now working with UNESCO? I'm now working with UNO. I'm now working with uh, Putin and Russia. That we are the one making sure that arms get to. <laughs> Have Christians giving you excuse? You yourself, you feel for them. A sister told me after first time, say, Papa, please call him. I said, Call who? My husband. I say, Papa. I said, I won't call him. I did like that. I say, I don't care. If you like, let him carry him, leg, put him into one trap. I want to leave church. You should put the husband and carry the trap going. I said, I don't care. Your husband that should be a teacher, that should be a minister, I should call. I've called him about five times. Warn him. I asked, I said, are you not better now than before? They are, they are business people. Are you not making more money now than before? He said, I'm making more money. Then I don't know what discouraged. Maybe you don't have a baby yet. You are discouraged. I said, I don't care. When I said that, I mean it. As you put your one leg out, I hear you go to this church here. Now. Go anywhere. God will give everybody the pastor they deserve. Immediately, you, I'm not your pastor. There's a pastor out there that you deserve. God will give that to you. Carry your, in, uh, your, your, your snares and crutches and go. Ministry is where God leads us. He says, I should take care of you. I should feed you. Go back and see why. Ask, look at. See why, verse 29. For I know this, that after my departure, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. It means there is a place where your man of God should be in your life. If that place is removed, you will be devout. I don't care how knowledgeable you are. You will be devout. Look at the next one. Next verse. Next verse. Is this a verse? Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples from. He didn't say members, disciples. Immediately the shepherd is not doing his work. Somebody is going to gossip the church that will draw you away. The day you leave church, that's the way a leading and a move of the spirit leaves you. You start becoming one who struggles to know, struggles to know, struggles to hear, struggles to hear. God show me. God do this. God lead me. God do that. And he will not do He's not your boy boy. He's not. But when you are there, look at what the man that Jesus handed over shepherding to Peter said. You know, in John 21, when Jesus handed over the shepherd, it was to Peter. He said, if you really love me, Peter, feed my flock, feed my sheep, feed them. That's all Jesus told him. So look at what Peter said. Everyone look at this. First Peter 5. Verse 1 to 7. Let's look at it. First Peter 5. Verse 1 to 7. Are you getting blessed? First Peter 5. 1 to 7. The elders. That's what they call pastors. Which are among you I exhort. Who am also an elder. And a witness of the sufferings of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory. That shall be revealed. Next verse. Feed the flock of God. Which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for fitting looking, but of a ready mind. He's talking to shepherds. He said, feed them. And when you feed them, exercise oversight over them, not by constraint. No, 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 no. But willingly. Nobody should cajole you. I'm not cajoled to be a pastor. I have friends and mates who are, high, who are, who are warded, heavily warded. I went to the town where I schooled one of these, and they told me someone was looking for me, that is asking of me. He was a junior in the school, but now he's even going for governorship of his state right now. He's a senator. I have plenty of them like that. Do I not say, oh God, how I wish I would have entered politics. Oh God, look at me here, pastoring 27, 27 people. Oh God. Okay. He said, willingly, not of constraint. Then why you do it? He said, not for filthy looking, but of a ready mind, not based on what they pay you or what you can get from them. Next verse. Neither has been lords over God's heritage, but has been examples to the flock. That's why when I'm being example, anybody is going the other way, say, remove him, we don't need him. I'm using Keke to come to church. That's what I use. For years now, 
I've not been able to buy a new car. Maybe if I put my mind in it so strongly, I would have bought. So I'm an example to you. My wife is seated in it. And we came to church. We are the first to come to church. I have every reason not to be like that. Every reason I, I can start up, wait, and call an Uber. He come and carry me. That looks more dignifying and I can pay for it no matter the amount. Or take a drop. But I, I just want you to know. I want you. Now, it's not for one month. Being an example. Have you seen me complaining? My boy who carries me, I said to him, I said, when, even when my car comes, I must have a keke nape. Even this man was just telling myself, I must buy a keke and put it inside because I've enjoyed this keke and see that keke is better than air conditioner car. The only thing keke don't have is speed. If he had speed, eh? To forsake a Mercedes Benz, I'll buy keke. Keke, he can't talk about it. Oh, no, no. If he's staying keke by the side, on a sunny day, you thank God for keke. You will be very happy. I didn't know that for years. I sit in a, a cozy car. AC is hitting me. Boom, boom, boom. I, think I, was enjoying. I didn't know that I was partnering with sickness and disease. Now I'm in keke. Hey, I'm encouraging the keke people because to, today is not bad. It's how you handle what you are going through that makes it bad or good. Say, being an example. Next verse. So that when Christ Jesus, our chief shepherd, shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Not that crown is not for you. I'm the pastor, you give it to me. But based on my observing those things, all for the leading of the spirit. Next verse. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the earth. It didn't say submit yourself to the elders. Unto the definite article. The. The. The elder. So all of you are the younger. Even if you are 10 years older than me, you are all the younger. He says submit yourself to me. Why? Ye all, ye, all of you be subject one to another. That means submission should be normal in the church. And be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and gave it grace to the humble. Take note of that. Are you seeing something? So who is the proud there? The one who doesn't submit to the elder. Who is the humble there? The one who submits to the elder. So who will God resist? Yeah, no, it's you. When I say that it's all night, you as a leader, you stay back. The only good I'll do for you is to re remove you from leadership and from work. That's the only good. If I leave you there, you keep rebelling. You are looking for trouble. Look at it. And God resisted the proud and gave it grace to the humble. Next verse. Look at this next verse. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Where, what is the mighty hand of God? Under the authority ordained to oversee you. That ye may be exalted in due time. There are certain exaltations of your life that is key to my pastoring you key. That's why when you struggle and struggle, ask yourself where you are in my life. You are not meant to join the choices of the, of the world to be doing what they are doing. All of us are in engineering, but we are not all pastored. We are not all overseen. Are you here with me? Look at the verse that is well misunderstood. The next verse, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Who is in him there? Not God. Not God. God doesn't care it for you. He has cared for you. He said there is a man that cared for you. He's the overseer. You don't cast cares on God. It's your pastor you cast cares on. Why do you cast cares on him? There's what we call the mighty hand of God by the institution of God. So it's not just about him. Even in Moses' time, it's like that. Isaiah 63, look at this. Verse number nine. Are you getting blessed? I had a young man in this church who got born again, started following me. 
He will complain, complain, complain. He say, devil, devil, devil. I say, shut up. He say, Papa, look at it now. Look at the hole. Nobody's a graduate. Even me, before I came to know you, I got admission. That's how I left Uniport and came down. I said to him, all I want you to do is to serve me. Whether you wrote your name in jam paper or not, you shall get that. I want, to, I want to show him the place of a man of God. Whenever I see it, he say, Papa, hey, hey, jam. I say, shut up. He went and wrote jam, came back with fear. I said, didn't I warn you? Don't talk about it. You get admission without anybody. He got admission. When he got admission, going to school became scary. He said, this is, I said, shut up. Just go to school, learn like everybody when they give an exam. I want to use him to show that when you serve a man of God, there is a place you walk in. I'm, telling, I'm not joking with you. Now, I want to ask you a question. If Dangote employ you in Dangote, employs you, and when you came, he came one day, saw you. He said, who is this one? Come to my house. Nobody goes to his house, you come. He said, from now henceforth, you walk in my house. Then after one month, they paid you 3.5 million in salary. While in Dangote, they employed you. Your salary was 700,000 naira. He says, sir, I saw this. He said, that's your salary for the month. And now month, they give you 5 million naira. And now when they give you six, like that, it's because of who you're working for. You see this church? The day you dare love me enough to serve me, that's the day you cross what other people have not crossed. That's the truth. That's the truth. Do you notice that the ministry of Mark will profit Paul? I'm not serving a man, no. You made a big mistake. As long as church is concerned, it's men you serve. You made a big mistake. You can't serve God, you serve a man. Let me show you about this man. Therefore, I will... Sister, Sister 3, please. Sister 3, verse 9. In all the affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them in his love, in his pity. He redeemed them and he bade them and carried them all the days of old. Next verse. Next verse. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was torn to be their enemy and he fought against them. Two personalities are mentioned here. Angel of his presence, the angel that went with them. Holy Spirit, God. But when they rebelled against the Holy Spirit, who were they rebelling against? Who now fought against them? The angel. He said, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Now in due time, he may exalt you. Next verse here. Then he remembered the days of old Moses and his people saying, where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock, with the pastor of the church? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within them or within him? Next verse. That led them by the right hand of Moses. Right hand is not physical. By the authority of Moses he established. With his glorious arm, dividing the water before them and making himself an everlasting name. Next verse. That led them, that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. Next verse. As a beast goeth down into the valley, the spirit of the Lord caused him to rise. So did thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Acts chapter 7 and verse number 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. With the angel, we spoke to him in Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Who is he talking about? If you read from verse 5, it's Moses. He was a pastor in the church in the wilderness. And he led them through the wilderness. No street. No street. No marked out road in the wilderness. He led them by the spirit. 
But there was an angel with him. When they disobeyed him, then it was that angel that fought against them. Uh -uh. But yet the angel carried them. The angel saved them. The angel brought them out. It's the same thing. Take heed to the people that I've given to you. Leading is in church. Ephesians 4, verse 30. It's in church. Look at verse 30, everyone. Ephesians 4, 30. Can we read it together? Ephesians 4, 30. Everybody read together. One to go. The word grief simply means don't make him sad. Don't make him sorrowful. He won't leave you. He won't leave you. But when you make the Holy Ghost sad, you cannot know his leading or his move. So what really makes him sad? The community. Where we are. Now you don't pick a verse and use it to teach. Contextually, this paragraph, the paragraph that contains this place starts from verse 25. But from verse Verse 11 to 24, he taught us what they would do in our life. What these people would do in our life. Then verse 25, look at what it says. Next verse. Verse 25. Verse 25. Verse 25. We are for putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. That's his neighbor he's talking about. Okay. Next verse. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your rod. He's talking about the community. Next verse. Neither give place to the devil. He's talking about the community. There are things you do in the church, you open the way for the devil. You are lying to one another. You are getting unnecessarily angry. Nobody can make your angry to go down. Yes, the brother cheated you. Then we have called you together and tried to get into it and told the brother to pay you back. He's paying back. You say church is supporting that guy. They should have called police and arrest him and throw him to jail. And you forget that I say we shouldn't carry our things and the world should judge. First Corinthians chapter number 6. Say they shouldn't judge. That we should have wise men amongst us who can judge. Oh, you don't understand, pastor. He took me to the house and raped me. Okay, let's come into it. What do we want to come in? Our communal nature, love. He said love covered multitude of sin. Don't tell any other person. It's between two of us here. He said no. No, 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 my mother must hear this. You know your mother hates our church. No, 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 my father must hear it. You know our father, your father hates our church. Now, if your father hears it, the foreign money, you can bring police and be making trouble here. You know very well. You say, ah, how do you forgive something? We forgive. Look at it now. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. That's where the spirit is. The leading is. Let him that stole stay no more. So when we get you, you're a stealer. You know a stealer? It's like bigger than a thief. Let him that stole. They didn't say he that is a thief that stole. A stealer is bigger than a thief. A stealer is the most crafty thief on planet Earth. He can steal your tie out of your neck without you knowing that the tie has left you and gone. He said, he said, let him that stole. He's in our community. He's a member of our church. Let him steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needed like a church we need. Are you seeing that? He didn't say, let him that stole. Call him. Hand him over to police. Tell police, he's a thief. He's a thief. He stole the church 1,200 naira. Put him in jail. And this one say, ah, pastor, they encourage you to steal. Yes, I'm encouraging you. Come and steal from us. There's a way you get to. There's a policeman in church that will arrest you. That's where we bring Romans 13 into your life. You know Romans 13? Go back and read from verse 1 to 8. There's a thing you will do right now. I'll turn my back and the authorities of the church will handle you according to the constitution of the church. You stay here? Say, pastor is going to steal. Come and steal. We do even have for you to steal. Uh -uh. It's not who keep money you can steal. If you like, they have been breaking our offices, entering everywhere. They have not seen 10 naira. A church that is this strong will be giving you money to chop. Ah, go and break our bank account and take the money. You can break it. And you cannot for one nine us. You remember the guy that called me? <laughs> I said, who are you? He said, are you Pastor Austin? I said, yes, I'm Pastor Austin. He said, I said, you, who are you? He said, I'm an agent of Facebook. <laughs> I have allowed him to finish his credit. I didn't know how I spoke to him. I said, I said, go and sleep. Go look for work and chop. <laughs> That's what I'm saying here. If you have a Yahoo Yahoo boy in church, 
say, let him walk with his hand. What is good? Not everything is good. That he may have and give. This is the community they are addressing right now. Next verse, look at it, verse 29. Let no corrupt word, putrefied word, no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of a defying, that he may minister grace unto the hearers. Not just any word. Smelling words shouldn't come out of your mouth. That's where you get verse 30 now. Contextually, you look at verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. So what grieves the Holy Spirit is those things I said. Look at verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Are you seeing that? Next verse. Next verse. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. There are something that will happen to you right now. You make sure that your community does not hear that don't believe in this church. You make sure they don't hear. Because when they hear, that's the end of your coming to church. That's the end. You know very well that there's something you say that happened here. That's the end of another person coming to a church. So why do you, why do you talk about it? He said, forgive as God in Christ forgave you. Galatians 5. Verse number 13. I'm showing you where the leading is so I don't struggle. Let me tell you, when someone serves God like this, follow. You don't have a problem. That's the truth. The only reason you have not gotten a good suitor to marry is because all the men coming are the wrong one. If they have married you, you have hated marriage by now. That's the truth. When I got, God said to you, Go to my wife. I was 27 years old. She was 32 years old. You wouldn't know. I'm planning to marry at the age of 30. Say, marry now. So I didn't know by 30 I should start my own ministry. I didn't know. There were suitors bigger than me. Men who have wadada. What did I have? Mouth. The only thing I had at that time was my mouth. My mouth was a good preacher a good teacher, evangelist. Anywhere there is soul winning, I will go there. Prayer meeting, I will be there. They are teaching, I am there. Conference, I am there. Any place ministry is working, I will be there. I trick like a tricker. When I proposed to her, was at the time, the worst time of my life. The time when if I see 20 naira, it's as if I saw an angel call money. That's a time that star starvation becomes salvation. I carry it. Believing in it. Turn it to fasting. When it cannot work that way, I bring it back to endurance. And was going. When you see me, you know that something is happening to me. My twin sister saw me in Lagos, started crying. Because she, she was chopping. Chopping life. And she saw me say, Oh, you open a guinea. Oh, you open a Sincerely, I'm not lying. I didn't know why she's crying. I looked at myself. Now she can't carry. <laughs> look at you, look at you. You're a graduate, oh. Look at you, look at you. I said, what happened? I didn't, I didn't know my neck. If you don't have mirror, thank God. <laughs> Listen, any young man here going through something, don't bring mirror around you. Remove mirror. Mirror is not a property of the house. I didn't have mirror. I don't know anything. I don't know that my beards are scattered. I don't know my head are just standing up. All I know is that evangelism. That's all I know. Preaching the gospel, that's all I know. My sister cried. Started borrowing things in a grocery shop. For me, borrowed things maybe at that time worth over 40,000 naira. Pack, give me, say, go and cook. Fasting, fasting, fasting. And that time, me and fasting our brother. There is no separation. I married fasting. I went home, cooked the food. Ate it between night and morning so that I can never come back home. All the meat she bought, I ate it and left it. I used to leave the house and live in church. That's when I proposed to her. Why would she say yes? She told me with her mouth. When she went and checked the things she wrote, ten things about who to marry. The only thing is that she didn't write a pastor. She didn't. God asked her. All these things can only be found in a man of God like him. See me, Nami win. I'm the, yes. Why some people are praying, I want to marry uh, my speck. I want to marry my speck. 
Leave your speck and serve God. I want to marry my speck. My speck. A lady that will help me ministry. A lady that uh, when we start ministry, if I'm working, is working. I didn't even know my wife is a big woman in where she's working. See, pastors, in there, I've never had time before. It's when I propose, she agree. And I tell her that when we, when we marry, you stop working in this Nigeria railway compression. She asked me, who is working in Nigeria railway compression? I said, is that not where you're working? <laughs> I don't know. She's here. I've, I didn't know I married the one that will help me. I know I married someone who is kind-hearted. I thought I married a prayer warrior like me. That, that's why. I, because it's prayer, prayer. I met her in church. And I thought not prayer, prayer. My thought is that when we marry, from morning to night, we'll be praying and singing in the Holy Ghost. I didn't know that I married a helper. A strength. One that when I'm naked, will cover my nakedness. I didn't know. The first good shoe I wore was not that I proposed to my wife. I didn't know that my old shoe, see. Let me tell you, so I can know what it means ministry. They are all caught. The third time I want to sew it, the thing, as I finish sewing, I put my leg to go. You do, The letter say, Onye wuna ne The one that died, the new The only shoe. And I'm going to preach at Nako. You know Nako in Lagos? Nako at the airport. Where all the foreigners are passing to. That's where I'm going. I did as if I, he didn't talk. I was wearing my red socks. That's the time when they don't do matching again. It's when you have good socks you cannot want to wear. When you bring out this one, hold here, hold here, hold here. You keep it down. You bring out this one, hold here, hold here. You keep it down. Now so the right wall. Go my way. I went to preach that day in that place. Nobody told me, your shoe is bad. If you think they're looking at you, when you are doing ministry, nobody's looking at you. It's only when things start happening that people can now see you. That time is not happening. The Lord will cover you. Mission. That's why I married a good wife. These 23 years now. I know that even if I do bad things, my wife and she will not do me anything. Yeah. I married a good wife. If you want now, go meet her. Joshua, meet her. Let her lay hands on you to marry a good wife. If you are not married, the after service, meet mama. Go and hug her. Say, mama, this hugging is impartation service I came. <laughs> Please, I'm not leaving you. Say a word over my life. Papa, say you're a good wife. Then when he said, bless you, you can leave and go. I give you right. Go and hug her. Ministry is where he leads you. I didn't pray for it. I didn't pray. Same thing with money. Right now, I need a minimum of 60 million to save my neck from, from shame. Minimum. And I'm still believing God for it. And it will come. It will come. It doesn't look like it will come, but it will come. One, the, the project will finish. Two, I will not be made there. Are you here with me? I know that it's because I'm in ministry as many are led. Are you led? Are you led? Ask somebody, where is your ministry? Ask somebody, ask him, ask him. Are you led? Are you Mark? Have they taken you? Or you are resisting? Are they carrying you? Or you are too heavy for them to carry? Some of us are too heavy. If you know what I'm talking about, meet a goat early in the morning when the owner wants to sell it. <laughs> a sheep is going without rope. But a goat, small one, be like this. The owner is on the road. <laughs> That's why I say you separate goat from sheep. Ask me, are you a goat? <laughs> or are you a sheep? Are you too heavy to carry? <laughs> Would the rope cut on your neck? <laughs> say, take Mark. Led by the Spirit. Say, I'm led. Say, I'm led. I follow the move. I'm not resisting. Where he goes? There I go. My comfort is in the ministry. He comforted me in all my tribulation. That I may have comfort to comfort others. 
I'm confident. I'm confident that the leading of the spirit, the move of the spirit will not betray me, will not disgrace me. I'm useful for ministry. I refuse to be useless. Say it again. For ministry, I refuse to be useless. Say it to me, Lord, lead me. Use me. Use me. 